He's now, I think, they're going to put the title on him at some point. I think when the Roman thing is kind of runs its route, and it will run its route. They all do. Hello, everybody. This is Bill After reporting for Sports Kita. And once again, we have a member of our expert panel for our year end awards. And for you to pick the winners of all the great categories of 2022, go to sportskita.com and you'll find a link on the top left of the website that will take you right to the voting area. So, as uh, Uncle Sam would say here in the United States, we want you. Yeah, you got to vote. So, uh, and tell your we friends. The pe- we the people. We the people. That's right. That's right. Dutch Mantel, welcome to uh, uh, to the voting area of Afters Alley and Sports Kita. I'm, I'm glad to be here, and I'm glad to give my supposedly expert opinion. I don't know how expert it will be. They are. But, you know, but a lot of times when we look at fellow wrestlers, we look at it as a fan. That's the way I look at it. That's me too. Me and too. if I'm a fan, then I'm a fan. I don't care what they do. They, they might right. not be do one move, but if I'm a fan, I'm a fan. Now, remember, these awards are for the year 2022. And in my hand here, I have my official, my official sports oh. categories here. Yeah. I see. Official sports key to categories. So we're going to start off with the 2022 Male Wrestler of the Year. Well, you got to go with Roman Reigns. And but, tell me well, he was the one that was featured. He's been the one featured for three years. Yeah. And he's held it for like, what, over two years now? Yeah. Over 600 yeah. days or whatever it is. Yes. And then I'll have to give uh, Sami Zayn, a clo- not a close number two, but a number two. And wh- why, why Sami Zayn? Because what he did was not necessarily uh, in ring action, but he gave connectivity to the fans. They yeah. feel him. Yeah. He is yeah. just like them. You take most of those guys out there. And let, let's be honest, Sammy don't even look like he's walked by a gym in 10 years. You're right. You're right. <laughs> and But he goes in there, and he's just like, He's like them. I mean, he's not all muscled up and all this, and he's funny, and they like him. Does so he? I would give. I, I would give him my number two. Now they don't like Roman so much, but they do respect Roman. Yes, very much. Does that uh, make you feel Usi? I don't know what feeling Usi is. I don't. Well, I don't. Really, then, I don't. I don't know. So, <laughs> but I do. I, I do like Sami Zayn. Yeah, and, he has uh, certainly come a long way but roman reigns the head of the table most of our panel of experts have uh put him at the uh, top of the 2022 you know wrestling awards melcher didn't put roman reigns at the top i mean the, the fans of the wrestling observer yes they, Dave Meltzer. they picked they picked moxley didn't they they did they did i don't know i don't know that's well, a different a fan times, that's a different uh, fan though exactly the aew fan um is not the same fan as a wwe fan so fans like both of them but the wrestling observer a lot of people and i read the observer every week but a lot of people uh say that they're uh the fans there are biased to aew because they want more uh wrestling and ecw style which is what it a lot of it it is than wwe will give well, I, I wouldn't say AEW is W uh, is a ECW style at all. Did somewhat, you? well, somewhat. Yeah. When they, some of Mox, Moxley's uh, matches and the the bloodletting and stuff like that, I think you can compare some parts of AEW with ECW. Well, in that respect, you can. I agree with you. Okay, what well, you, you said. That's all right. That's I'm right. I'm going to agree with you. All right. Well, I was going to agree with you, so it, it's a draw. <laughs> All, right. It's a draw. All right, let's go to the male wrestler. I'm sorry, to the female wrestler of the year. Mm-hmm. 
Well, again, I'm going to go with the most featured one, Bianca Belair. Okay. And beside her, they her, just featured why? Are they, well, they just featured her more than anybody else. Now, I don't watch her all that much. I'm just going off what I hear, but I would have to go with her in my ignorance of what, what all they've done. Uh, the girl in AEW, what's her name? Jade. Uh, Jade Cargill. You know, you know what she needs? What? She needs an opponent. Yeah. She wouldn't be 53 and oh, who's going to? But I have the opponent to beat her. I was just going to ask you, who is that opponent? I, and you, you you say, I don't see it, but you may see it. That uh, Willow girl. Oh, no, I definitely see that. Yes. Yeah. It's power and power. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. uh, the fans like her. Yes. Very, very, now very now, much. Now, she's a big girl, but people love her. She's a big girl and she can perform. Mm -hmm. Pretty face. Bianca Belair and uh, my Willow girl. I'm going to give her over Jade. I'm going to give Willow over Jade. Really? A write-in vote? Yes, if I was writing it in, okay. which I'm not writing it in, I'm just sending it in. Yeah, you're talking it in right here on uh, Sports I, I am. By God. All right. Hey, I went to the doctor the other day and what I told it, well, I told him I was having a problem remembering things. And he said, How long you had this problem? And I said, What problem? <laughs> Get it? I, yeah, I do. I went to the doctor the other day and I told. <laughs> I told the doctor that my, my wife thinks she's a vacuum cleaner. He yeah. said, well, why don't you take it to a psychiatrist? I said, how am I going to clean the floor? So anyway, <laughs> let's move on to the... That was uh, good. That was good. Thank you. Thank you. It's an old soupy sales joke. Uh, let's go to the best promo skit. Now, nobody would know soupy sales today. That's correct. Google, everybody. Yeah, That's soupy. -E soupy sales. -E yes. yes. Uh, so let's go to the best promo skills. Well, that's a toss up between, I think, Sami Zayn. Okay. And Paul. Okay. And uh, why would you say that? Yeah. Well, because they're so natural at doing it. Sami Zayn, there's no saying in wrestling. If you can't angle them in, talk them in. Yeah. And you'd, good talkers could get you to come and see it. That's always been the case. But Sami Zayn, I think, is phenomenal. And, uh, but Paul Heyman, he's a, he's a master right now. He certainly is. He certainly is. You know, I see Sami Zayn when I look at uh, you and I think back to the days of uh, uh, Jarrett Promotions, mm -hmm. uh, Memphis, and I could see Sami Zayn uh, as a major superstar in that territory. Would you agree? Yeah, he, oh, yeah. Because Memphis wasn't all about great wrestling. It was great angles and great characters. And that's what we, that's what we ate on for all the time I was there. I mean, some guys could give great promos, but, but take Take handsome Jimmy Valiant. He couldn't work his way, and he'll tell you this. He couldn't work his way out of a paper bag. Yeah. But he could talk. He could talk you in. And I saw him one night go to Memphis. And they started playing the music. And he danced all the way to the ring. Of course, the people were dancing in the stand. And he would dance around the ring, yeah. and maybe once or twice to get in the ring. Then get attacked, boom, 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 match go about a minute, and all of a sudden, then, then uh, Handsome would make his comeback, boom, 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 one, two, three. The music would hit again, and he'd dance his way out. Yeah, the, the whole total. From New York City. The, the, the guy would dance his way to the ring, have a, like a minute, two minute match, and dance his way out, and that was it. Yeah. And everybody, everybody was happy, everybody was satisfied. And you got to see Handsome Jimmy. What would, the, see uh, what would the Sami Zayn match have been uh, if Sami Zayn was where he is now, but in Memphis with the crew that you were back with? Who, what would that top match have been to draw people into the Coliseum? Well, I think he could have done anything with Sami, really. 
Yeah. I think he would be good at gimmick matches. Mm -hmm. He was made for that, I think. Yes. And anytime you would put him in something with a decent opponent, a decent heel, he'd draw you some money. And damn sure it wouldn't hurt you at the gate, but he'd, he'd help you. And if you really did, if, and this is what I like about their angle in WWE, they had patience with uh, Sammy and the bloodline and Roman. It went and went and went, and everybody knew something was gonna blow at the end. I mean, they didn't surprise anybody, but they did surprise them on when they, when they finally did it. That actually surprised people. And they yeah. did it well. They had patience. They took their time. They made sure they had it right. And an old time Booker one time told me, he says, never do anything before it's time. Because yeah. if you do it, make sure you can back. If it's wrong, you can back up. And once they did this, they couldn't back up on it, but they knew they had it right. And the people sat in the crowd and they appreciated the art form. That's when it becomes art. It's when you do it right, everybody can see it coming. You see this masterpiece they painted. Now that's why WrestleMania is going to have so much interest on it. You're going to have Cody coming in, taking on Roman and the next, the, the next link we're going to have is Kevin Owens is going to join mm -hmm. and everybody can see that coming too. He's going to join, uh, Sammy, and they're yeah. going to take on the bloodline. Now, that will probably be on separate nights, but for a one card, I don't think, I, I think that's the strongest main event they've had in, in years. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, when you talk about the patience, that's so right, because uh, even though people might have seen it coming, they didn't know what was going to happen, number one. And number two, it's still going on, and we're all still glued to the TV sets watching. No, we're it. we're we're all up in that. Yeah. Because I'm appreciating how they did. It. Somebody told me they're going to turn on Sammy. I says, but and I predicted this too. What if Sammy turned on them? Yeah. Which yeah. got him over more. They told him to take the chair and hit his buddy. Kevin Owens, and he was, all he was trying, listen, he was a guy who wanted to do something. He had aspirations. He had dreams. So he got it with the bloodline and he was happy, but they made it so miserable for him. And the people felt that. So finally, when they told him, when Roman handed him the chair and say, use it on your buddy, he just couldn't do it. Yeah. And when he hit him, man, uh, the roof came off. Now and Montreal, the, the Montreal when when he was in Montreal, yeah. I mean uh, they said that you, you you couldn't hear yourself think when it he went a, up it against was a Hogan him. pop. I said, "Yep." And yeah, it was so I'm um, surprised. The surprise. You know the old saying is, "Tell me you're something without telling me you're something." I yes. heard Meltzer <laughs> and Brian Alvarez saying that would have been the perfect opportunity to put Sammy over. Now, granted, it would have got a big, big pop. Yeah. But they would just have to change it right back, and it's not time for it. No, it was not time. And the other surprise here that no one thought of is they all thought, well, Sammy and Kevin Owens, KO now, they're just going to be the best pals. And Owens yeah. promo with Sammy in the ring saying, my family was there. You didn't help me. So go to hell. You're on your yeah. own. No one expected that. No, one I didn't expect that. that. I thought they would join up and hug. We which would have been the, it would have got them to the same spot, but yeah. without that added drama. So there's still, this is what I've always said about wrestling fans. They didn't forget that Sammy and Kevin hated each other at one time. Mm hmm. And Ring of Honor, they hated each other. Yeah. And so you got to, that's got to carry over into the stuff you do now. And you're thinking, what if I hated somebody and I don't know if I could trust them to team up with them or not. 
if you make it personal, which is what this is, yes. because the people are putting themselves in Sami Zayn's shoes and saying, and they want him to be successful because they like him. Now, I don't think they hate Roman Reigns. They, they just know he's just a no good. Yes. And we've seen he's probably, I mean, you can hate people without, uh, well, I'll say dislike people without really hating them. But, and since Paul, Paul, uh, mm. Paul Heyman, yeah, Triple H, Triple H, oh. is, since he's taken over, uh, you could see a big, big change. Oh, absolutely. Everything is more deliberate. Everything is more thought out. I think Vince just kind of threw it together just to get through it. Because he's done that thousands and thousands and thousands of times. And it's not like they're dying for lack of money. They got all the money. They're, they're, they're printing money anyway. <laughs> but Triple H is a welcome addition to that creative team. Well, he doesn't have that uh, pressure of uh, his father-in-law looking over his shoulder and questioning everything that he's coming up with. Well, I'm sure that maybe Vince made him feel stupid sometimes. Mm -hmm. why, why would you even think that? Now, things have changed. Yeah, things have changed a lot. But when I booked Puerto Rico, I did, I did the same formula. I let things grow organically before I did anything with them. Mm -hmm. I would go watch the matches and the people disliked the guy if I was just starting him out. Well, disliked him. Why? Because he hadn't done, he hasn't done anything, but naturally they didn't like him. I said, okay, if they naturally don't like him, what if I did something with him where they have a reason to dislike him? Now he'll be, now he'll be over more. Yeah, and I would just I would let guys grow on their own till I got ready for them, and bam, it was right there. I didn't yeah. force it. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, yeah, let it take its let it take its course. I would listen to those people, and they told me what to do. Yeah, I didn't yeah. tell them; they told me. Yeah. All I had to do was listen for it and be attuned to what they were telling me, and go and do it. All right. And it worked. We're going to get back to the awards, but you had a great. Uh, era in a uh, uh, world wrestling council there. Uh, oh, it you, was era. I well, remember. this was actually with, this was actually with, well, it was with both of them, but this was, was actually with IWA. Yes. Yeah. 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 Victor Quinones. Rest, rest, yes, rest in peace. Yeah. Yeah. He was a good friend of all of us. So, um, so you put Sami Zayn over as number one in the best promo skills. What do you think of MJF? This is what I think, MGF is too crude for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yes. He's, if I had my, if I had my granddaughter with me and hearing him talk, I wouldn't let her even listen to him. Yeah. Now he's very good at what he does. I'm not saying that, but he's just a little too crude. And he, if he would try to get away from that a little bit, be a smart ass without using all the the full I mean, line of words. Well, not necessarily, yeah, some of that, but this, anybody can do that. Anybody can cuss. Anybody can call you an MF or anybody can, but to have a promo, like a Cornette interview, I mean, where he can tear you to shreds without cussing and using bad words, mm -hmm. I think. And that's my problem with MJF because that gets old quick, really quick. Now I've listened to him give a couple of interviews. There didn't seem to be that much difference between them. It's mm -hmm. just still the same thing. He's fighting the fans, and but I think that'll run his course. He has to, he has to find somebody that he's zeroing in on, and then zero in on the fans. I think he could get them then. I don't think his interview. Uh, is as good as hurt him the first time was impressed second time a little less impressed but still impressed but now every time he goes out there it's just more of the same some people are saying his promo skills are like the second coming of roddy piper what do you say no okay okay no not roddy piper's it was only well, of course people can say what they want to say i don't i don't what i'm saying is i don't see it 
he's not bad. He is. He's very good, actually. But I'm saying, for me, I think uh, his interviews have a tendency to remain the same. Okay. And and right. you need to you need to change that up. Okay. That's fair. I'm going to back up on something I said when I was talking about AEW and ECW. I think what I really meant is that the fan that goes to AEW and they're all terrific fans is that ECW type of crowd that existed during the days of ECW. Would you agree with that? Partially. Okay. But okay. okay, if you look at an AEW crowd though, there's a lot of women out there. There are. You look at an ECW crowd, you have a hard time spotting a a cis woman. All right. <laughs> I like how you put that. All right, let's move on to uh, um, best baby face, or as we used to call him in the magazines, best fan favorite, best good guy. That's a that's a tough one. I tell you who I do like, and I don't know how he did it. Orange Cassidy. Yeah, really. Okay. I don't know how he did it. But that is the part of wrestling that entertains you. You know, you have to suspend the belief. But he's a great worker. Yes. When he gets out of the kick in the leg real easy and he does all that. Uh, and Liv Morgan, I think for a baby face, she, she's kind of small, even for a girl. She's short. But I think the fans just love her. They do. Uh, and I, I'd put Cody in third, even though Cody, Cody is going to challenge Roman at WrestleMania. The thing about Cody, what he has going for him, I think is, and I brought this up on another podcast that I do for, for me and a guy, James Romero, uh, Cody's injury may have helped him because, and this was my fear about Cody going to WWE from AEW is because, uh, the WWE has a tendency to eat their new talent alive. Yes. Yeah. At times. As soon as they get there, they've been there three weeks. Seem like they've been there six months. Because they put them out there, put them over, do something, and, and then they become part of the furniture, so to speak. I thought that him going in with Vince still in the seat, still in the power pocket, I think it may have been. Uh, I, I think him getting hurt at when he got hurt was actually beneficial to Cody in the long run. Because now he's let all the wins get behind him. Yeah. They've reset the sails. <clears throat> he's ready to get back on the boat. <clears throat> you agree with that? I mean, they yeah, can do no they can I, do no I, harm I do. if you're not there. I do. I I think what that they thought that when he was going to come back that they were going to make it really big this time. And uh uh, they knew how over he was at AEW and the timing was right. I talked to him at one point uh, during the time he was about to come back. And I said, the one thing that was missing and all, all the gimmicks they gave you and everything is they never married you to your father. That's what everyone mm -hmm. wants to see. Everybody <clears throat> wants to see that he's doing this for his dad and something. And now it's amazing because when I watch him in WWE, there are times when he just turns his head like this and he looks just like Dusty. It's like mm -hmm. Dusty has, has uh, uh, got gotten into uh, Cody's psyche here and everything. It, it, it's it's well, just the people, a wonderful the... thing that was happening. But but I thought, the moving on to 2023 here, that the WrestleMania match was going to be Roman, Cody, and Sami Zayn was going to be included in that. I think that would be a mistake. Yeah, yeah, I do now. Yeah, because <clears throat> Sammy and Cody were both baby faces. So if they win at each other, the people don't want to see that. No, I mean it, they they put up with it as long as it was part of the match. But don't put the cart in front of the horse. Mm -hmm. And before Sammy had a, uh, I mean before Cody had the match, I mean, would you buy a ticket to see Cody Rhodes and and Sammy Zayn? No, not right now. Yeah. I don't think you'd buy a ticket to see it. I don't care. That means that one of them would have to turn heel, and you don't want that. Mm -hmm. 
and putting two baby faces against uh, Roman. Don't you think those two baby faces would team up and oh, try to course. take it? Yeah, I mean, of course. You know, sometimes to watch wrestling, you have to say, "Well, okay, just let it go." You see something that doesn't seem right, well, whatever. But that to me was. Remember just what I just told you: never go so far that you can't back up. Yep, that's right. I don't that, know. I don't. That I don't know where, too far. Yeah, and I don't know where you back up from there. Then, if you back up, you give them less than what you gave them. So you pick Orange Cassidy as the. Uh, I'll pick Orange. What are we picking here? I've Baby been hit on the here, You picked Orange Cassidy. I'll pick Orange Cassidy. Well, you did. So I'm just yeah. uh, reverting back to that. All right, let's look at the most evil heel. The rule the most breakers, the bad guys, the most evil heel. Uh-huh. Bad guy of the year. So if it's bad guy of the year, why, do, why are some of them, there's two in it. Like it was well, MJF. Because, and, well, do, do, Dominic, uh, well, they, some of them are mixed up into different categories. <clears throat> you know, I think the bad guy of the year is, and he's not listed here, but I'm going to do a fan vote. I'm going to yeah. say Gun Gunther. Oh, yes. What an incredible. I don't know why he's not added in here. Well, this is 2022. You, rem so you remember. Well, he was here in 222. He was, but he didn't perform as what? Well. well, he didn't perform as much. Clash as Clash as at the Castle was in December. Yes, yeah, yeah. And that's when I made my mind up about this guy. He is the second Santa. coming. He's the second coming of Johnny Valentine. Do you know I said he was the second coming of uh, Waldo Von Erich? But more talented. Yeah. Gun yeah. Gunther is. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. So he's your right in vote. For he's my right in vote. Yes, he is. Because I think that guy has so much upside to him. <clears throat> because he's now, I think, they're going to put the title on him at some point. I think when the Roman thing is kind of runs its route, and it will run its route. They all do. But Gunther, and, you, and you've seen Johnny Valentine. Oh, I knew, yes, the Atomic Skull Crusher. Now, uh, now a lot of people have not, never seen this guy. And if you've never seen him, you go to a match and say, and he was in Charlotte for a lot of years. So you go and say you go to a smaller town and he's there. He didn't care how small the town was. He didn't care how big the crowd was or how small the crowd was. He went out there every night and his short match would be 40 minutes. Yeah, he beat people up. He beat the living out of them. Right, which is what Gunther does. And Gunther beats them up. Now, yeah. of course, with their consent, of course, him and Wahoo, oh. I've, I've, I've seen matches, they literally beat each other. Yeah. And so if you sit out there and you say, oh, this is, this is fake, till you look at them, and they're all beat out of crap, and you say, damn, what the hell? And he could be like 200 people there. Valentine didn't care. He had I mean, a no say it. He said, you may think Russ is fake, but you damn sure won't think I am. Yeah, I mean, I remember his matches at Madison Square Garden uh, against Buddy Rogers, and those were all-time classics, the two of them beating each other up. Um, no, I mean, I mean, exactly. Same thing, and Sheamus and, uh, and Gunther uh, yep. put on a match where if anybody says, you know, is wrestling fixed, I didn't know it was broken, my book. Uh, if anybody says <laughs> it's wrestling fixed, you see their, their match at Clash of the Castle, and that's like, well, that match was real. Now, we're talking about a guy now, Johnny Valentine, that Gunther reminds us of. Yeah. Most people listening to this, they don't know who that is. He's right, Greg no, Valentine's I'm... father, for right. one thing, and that's still a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But this Johnny Valentine, he was about 6'4", six, 6'5", six, not real muscled up, but a big frame on him. And he was kind of tall. And he he looked, he had the face of a killer. He did. He did. And when he looked at you, you know, there was no... If you walked in a room with this guy, just you and him, and he looked at you, you'd have fear hit you right away. Absolutely. Because he, he, he had the look and... 
And I, I worked for him a little bit in in Florida when he when he took over the book. This was after his plane crash. Yeah. And he was always very nice to me. You know, he was never he seemed like an okay guy. I didn't spend a lot of time around him yeah, he because was. He, he, was. he was a good guy. But my pick on this is Gunther. Okay. All right. So right in vote for Gunther. Final category here that we're going to uh, uh, hit you with is the, uh, well, let me see, because now this takes on a new light here. We're going to talk match of the year. And I know what you're going to pick already. And I assume you're going right for Gunther versus she Sheamus. Oh, yeah. Because okay. actually that match surprised me. It surprised me the way the people attuned to it. And that showed WWE that now this is an art form, I guarantee. I, I, but there's yes. ways, there's different ways to paint a picture. Gunther paints paints it differently. He uses those broad strokes and those power strokes. You know, a lot of people want to go in that detail and you know do all this, but not Gunther. And he doesn't spend a lot of time walking around the ring. He's he's always has a purpose, and he has a unique looking body like Valentine. Mm -hmm. Yes. He he's he's how tall? He's about six five, six six, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. And his accent fits him perfectly. And the well, two guys with him. He's. I met him uh, on several of my trips in to Europe, and he's got that great European style wrestling uh, in him. He really does. And I respect him because he, he used to weigh like 280, yeah. maybe more. But now he's down to like 250, 240, right. probably 250. And he's he, and he worked hard, which shows me dedication. And he's learned this business. Now he knows what works for him. And I'm a big, big fan of his. Okay. Big I'm fan. Glad, I'm sure he'd be glad to hear that. Final category, we're going to talk about Tag Team of the Year. Who we got? Now, Toxic Attraction and Damage Control are females, right? Yes. Uh-huh. But this is tag team. I got it. I got it. But I don't think, and I may sound a little misogynistic here, and I don't give a crap. I don't think <laughs> a woman's tag team really can beat a man's tag team, in, even in the art form. I just don't think that. Because... Okay. But I will go with this... Uh, Read that, read that list off again. I don't okay. think the acclaim, acclaim will get it. It's a FTR, RK Bro, the Usos. Acclaim. Okay, I got it now. Usos. Okay. Us yes. yes. The Usos, because if you watch them, these guys dig for 30 minutes. Dig it. I mean, they go out there and they do such good stuff. The timing is impeccable. I mean, nothing is wasted. Now, the FTR, they're a good team. I don't think they're quite as good as the Usos, but if they think they are, that's good. You got you got to think you're the, the, the top hand in, in the locker room to even compete. You got to have an ego to even do this. Uh, but, but I think it's Usos hands down. Okay. All right. Because just the wwe putting faith in you and your brother or they've been tag team champions for how long almost two years too right yeah yeah a long time and you see we're getting see the old wwf standard or the wwf standard yes they would put the titles on guys for a long time mm -hmm. bruno yeah. was over seven years right Oh, that, that was the first time in several years, the second time. Yeah, absolutely. So when you mention championship, wrestling championship, Bruno quite naturally pops in your head. Absolutely. And when somebody actually beat him, it was a big deal. Like when Ivan Cole beat him, it was a big, big deal. Yeah. And when Stan Hansen did, uh, who broke uh, who, who broke Bruno's Stan neck? Hansen. Stan Hansen. And you remember those days. I was there. I was shooting pictures. I was on the <laughs> ring. Of course I remember them. Okay, and, and let me just ask you this. I, you may have told me this before, but the atmosphere was electric, right? It was when he lost the title, 22,000 fans completely shut up. 
it was me it was a funeral yeah it was like like somebody just died they couldn't the believe it and they didn't even give Ivan Cole off the belt in the ring because they thought the fans would riot really yeah that's a good story